Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Uh, I do want to encourage you, if you've not already, to uh, pick up your Great Detectives of Old Time Radio t-shirts. Uh, you can go to uh, t-shirt.greatdetectives.net, or uh, if you want to get our uh, Johnny Dollar Anniversary uh, t-shirt, you can go to yours truly.greatdetectives.net, or our Joe Friday Never Said Just the Facts Ma'am t-shirt at friday.greatdetectives.net. Well, uh, now it's time for today's episode of Mystery is My Hobby. And the uh, title of this episode is Phony Husband. Mystery is My Hobby. Today's story took place last month in a small town in the upper part of the state. There had been a recent snowstorm, and a young man and his sweetheart were enjoying the winter weather by taking a sleigh ride. Well, here we are, home again. Oh, Harry, it's been fun. This is my first sleigh ride since I was a child. <laughs> uh, me too. And? Yes, Harry? You love me? Oh, you know I do. Why do you keep asking? Oh, because I like to hear you say it. Go on, say it. Oh, silly boy. All right. I love you, Harry, more than anything. Oh, my darling. Kiss me. There, now. You go on home and change, and don't forget to be on time for my birthday party. On time? I'm practically back here now. Here, let me help you out. There. Thank you, Harry. There's going to be another storm, I think. I hope it won't keep Fanny and Horace away. <laughs> It'll take more than a snowstorm to keep them home. Goodbye, Harry. So long, honey. Hello, baby. Who, who are you? What uh, are you doing here? Don't get excited, honey. Name is Chuck Anderson. Chuck Anderson? That name means nothing to me. You're a thief. I'm going to call the police. I wouldn't. Milt might not like it. Milt? Yeah, your brother Milt, honey. And you're... Yeah, that's it. It was me made the break with Milt. Maybe you read about it in the papers. Where's Milt now? Mm, not far from here. He couldn't come no farther, so he sent me on ahead to see you. Sent you on ahead? Is, is Milt hurt? Yeah, he's hurt bad. He can't be moved for a while. He said you'd help us. I don't believe you. I'm going to call the police. Now, honey, be reasonable. That just don't make sense. If Milt got picked up, they'd just double his sentence. You know that. You're lying. You and Milt separated. The newspaper story said so. You don't know where he is. Okay, honey, okay. Suit yourself. Milt wouldn't send you here. You'd be a fool to do such a thing. Sure, sure. All right, go ahead and call the cops. Go on. I'm going to. I'll show you. It's up to you, honey. I'm telling you. Milt's going to be awful mad. He never liked it in the pen. It'd kill him for sure if he had to go back and do double time. Hello? Operator? Milt said to tell you if they found me, they'd sure enough find him, too. What do you want me to do? Ah, oh, that's better, baby. I figured you'd see it my way. What do you want me to do? Well, look, baby, it's like this. Milt and me got it figured out that the cops will eventually wind up here. Of course they will. That's why Milt would have had more sense than to come here. Or send you. Yeah, Milt's got sense, all right. He's a smart cookie. That's why he sent me instead of coming himself. What do you mean? It's this way, see? Milt figures I can stay here with you, and every day I'll bring him food and medicine and stuff till he gets well enough to travel, see? You stay here with me? You fool, don't you think people would wonder who you are, or ask questions, become suspicious? Not when you tell him I'm your husband, honey. My husband? Oh, Milt says you wasn't no dumbbell. What on earth are you talking about? Jim. Jim? Yeah, that's it, baby. Jim. You remember Jim, don't you? And... Milt told you... Yeah, Milt told me about Jim. Oh, sure, sure. He said you were only married to the guy a couple of months, and then you threw him out because he was no good. Jim's dead. 
He died three years ago. Yeah, Jim's dead. I know he's dead, and Milt knows he's dead, and you know he's dead. Well? Oh, don't you get it, honey. It's the slickest idea I ever heard. Nobody but us three knows Jim's dead, see? So Jim ain't dead, so I'm Jim, so I'm back for a little visit, see? Well, that's absurd. It's ridiculous. Don't you think people would recognize you? No. Baby, look. Milt and me got all the angles figured. When you were married to this Jim guy, you lived down in Terrenceville. Nobody here ever saw him. Folks around here knew you'd been married, but they never saw this Jim. Simple, see? No. No, I won't do it. I, I can't. Okay, then, so we let Jim go back to the pen and do double time if he don't die first. Well, it wouldn't work. I've guests coming for dinner. There's guests Harry. Guests for dinner, huh? Gee, that's perfect. So you introduce me to him as your husband, and the word gets around. And nobody gets suspicious and calls the cops when they see a strange guy around here. But you don't understand Oh, sure I, I understand, baby. I ain't going to risk ruining a setup like this. What do you mean? Milt's got to have food and medicine, see? So I take him to him nights. I'm just around here daytimes, and I don't bother you at all. Oh, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Just relax and take it easy. You ain't got nothing to worry about at all. They're coming. Sure, so they're coming. That's fine. I can't go through with it. I can't. Oh, quit it. Don't be a fool. Look, the table's all set. There's a fire in the grate. Bright and warm and cozy. We're just a nice, happy family. I can't. I, I can't. Harry will... Hey, open up. We're oh. freezing. Open the door, baby. Let him in. Just keep thinking of Milton. You'll be all right. Oh, we're going to wear a out there. Happy birthday, darling. Why, didn't you hear us knock? All together, everybody. Let's go. Okay. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday... Oh. Oh, there's someone else here. Well, I... I didn't know you were asking anyone else, Anne. Oh, gosh, no. We wouldn't have come bursting in. Oh, well, aren't you going to introduce us, Anne? Oh, yes. Y yes, I'm going to introduce you. Horace, Fanny, Harry, this is Jim, my husband. Your husband? Anne. <laughs> oh, Anne, quit kidding us. Hiya, folks. I'm not kidding, Horace. I, I was married a long time ago, Jim. He's come back. I, I don't believe it. It isn't true. It's true, Harry. I'm sorry. Oh, it's some kind of a joke. It is a joke, isn't it? Anne, no. tell me. No, Harry, it isn't a joke. Oh, it, it must be. Wait a minute, chum. Anne, who is this punk who's raising all the rumpus? Oh, he's nobody, Jim. Just nobody. Nobody? This is disgusting. Oh, wait a minute, everybody. Let's not go jumping to conclusions. Let's give Anne a chance to explain. Well, there's nothing to explain, Horace. It's true. It, it isn't true. It's a lie. Anne. Let go of me, Harry. You're hurting I'll me. I'll do more than hurt you. You can't do this. Take it I'll... easy, punk. Take it easy. Let go of her. Keep away from me. Anne, let go of her, I say. Oh, stop I'll him. I'll kill you. I'll kill you both. You asked for it. Run it. Why, you cheap. Here, you cut it out, you two. The light. Harry, Anne, turn on the light. Somebody put on the light. Oh. <laughs> Inspector. Yeah, Bart. What makes you think the horse's name is Dobbin? Huh? I don't know. Aren't they all named Dobbin? <laughs> At least the horse doesn't object. <clears throat> How much farther do you think it is? Who cares? I haven't had so much fun since I was a kid. Yeah? Come on there, Dobbin! <laughs> Gee! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> what are you doing, horse? Oh, that's nice work, Inspector. Now we've turned completely around. Oh, well, I never did get along with horses. <laughs> Here, Bart, you drive a while. Very well, Inspector. Move over. Thanks. Uh, all right. Get along, boy. Come on. Uh, by the way, uh, is your friend the coroner going to meet us out at the Wheelock place? No. Nope. He's given me complete charge of the deal. That seems odd. Huh? I mean, asking you to come away up here from New York. Oh, well, I thought so, too, until he told me... His son, Harry, was mixed up in the shooting. Oh? Yeah. You see, Harry was in love with this Ann Wheelock. He and two other people went to her house to a birthday party. And who should be there but Ann Wheelock's husband? Well, ghost from the past, huh? Yep, ghost from the past. Only this ghost got a bullet to his gizzard. I see. As I understand it, Inspector, the lights went out just before the shooting took place. That's it. So we know that one of the four people in the room shot Jim. Hmm. 
Well, it sounds simple. Sure. Nothing to it. I uh, guess that must be the place up ahead. Hmm? Oh, yes. Rather a bleak-looking cottage, isn't it? Not a tree within a hundred yards. By the way, Inspector... Yeah? I don't suppose you read in the papers the other day about the two convicts who escaped from the state penitentiary? Huh? Well, uh, what about it? One of them was named Milton Wheelock. What of it? His sister is Anne Wheelock. The second convict was a man named Chuck Anderson. You don't say. Yes, I do say, Inspector. I also say that that's the real reason you and I are up here. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, Bart. Inspector, uh, I'm surprised uh, to uh, think you keep me from sharing in the glory of capturing America's number one gang leader. Oh, Bart, listen, I wasn't... I'm hurt, to Inspector. Much. Deeply hurt. Oh, well, perhaps I should feel grateful for your faith in asking me to come along. Very funny. Well, boy. Well, here we are. If you feel that you need me during the investigation, don't hesitate to demand my services, Inspector. That's right, Inspector Denton. I'm Harry Parsons. My father has told me a lot about you. He has, eh? Well, I can tell you some things about your dad. All good, too. Oh, thank you, sir. And now, uh... Introduce me to these other people. Yes. Uh, this is uh, Fanny Shepard, and this is uh, Horace McCready. Pleased to meet you. Hello. Uh, where's the girl? Anne? Oh, she's in her room. Uh, none of us have seen her since it uh, since it happened. Uh, look, Inspector, can't Fanny and I go home now? We didn't have anything to do with this. We didn't even know I'll the police. I'll let you know when you can go home, Bob. Hey, Bob. Did you want me, Inspector? Find anything? Oh, a good deal, Inspector. And what do you mean, a good deal? You've only been here five minutes. Yes, yes, I know. Well? Well, what? What have you found? A corpse, Inspector. Whose corpse? Oh, look, Bart, stop being so hard to get along with. Where's this corpse that you found? In that bedroom over there. Well, that, uh, that's uh, Jim, Anne's husband. Anne's husband. Is it, Harry? Of course it is. We ought to know. We were here when it happened. Afterward, we saw Harry's father put it in there. Hmm. Does that prove it was the corpse of Anne's husband? Yes, it does. I ought to know my own husband. Anne. Well, well, so this is Anne Wheelock, eh? Yes, I'm Anne Wheelock. I suppose you're the two policemen that Mr. Parsons called in to find out which of the four of us shot Jim. That's it, lady. We're the cops. Well, you don't have to look any farther. I shot Jim. Anne, quit talking like that. You didn't shoot him. Who did then? You, Fanny? Of course we didn't. That's right, Fanny, you didn't. I did. I can prove it. Now, there's a switch. Someone trying to prove she's a murderess. Of course I want to prove it. Do you think I'd like to see Fanny or Harry or Horace accused of a crime that I committed? I don't know, lady. I just never happened to run across anyone who cared a doggone who was accused so long as it wasn't them. Well, we live and learn, don't we, Inspector? Here, take a look at this gun, please. Hey, that is a gun, isn't it? Yes. A thirty-two caliber pistol. I think Harry's father's already established the fact that Jim was killed with a thirty-two. Yeah, that's right, but... I kept it in the desk by the door there. That's where I was standing when the lights went out. Fanny and Horace can tell you that. You didn't kill him, Anne. You couldn't have. Yes, I did, Harry. I'm sorry. There wasn't any other way. Well, Inspector? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, I guess that does it. She's got a motive. She's got the evidence. She even admits doing it, Bart. I guess our mission is accomplished, eh? Mm, no, I, I disagree, Inspector. Huh? What do you mean you disagree? I don't think that Anne killed her husband. But I did. I proved it. What more do you want? A good deal, Miss Wheelock. Your husband is dead, but I can prove that you didn't murder him. <laughs> I don't think that was very smart, telling Fanny and Horace they could go home. You don't? Why not, Inspector? Well, suppose one of them is guilty. Well? Well, doggone it. If they're guilty, they aren't just going to sit around home until we come after them. <laughs> don't you worry, Inspector. They'll be back within a couple of hours, as I asked them to. They will, eh? That's right. <laughs> oh, that's what I call having faith in human nature. Well, Inspector, that does it. What does what? We've uh, circled the house twice. Mm -hmm. 
Have we proved something? I'm not sure, Inspector. I expected to find that one of the electric wires extending from that outside pole to the house would be down. Didn't you? Did I? But of course. The people who were here last night all assured us that the lights were put out by the storm. Say. Yeah. There isn't a tree within a hundred yards of the house, so the disrupted service couldn't have been caused by a fallen branch. That's right. On the other Which hand... Which might indicate that someone turned off the lights. And if someone turned off the lights, I'd say that the murder of Jim was planned and premeditated. Wouldn't you, Inspector? Yeah, but... And look, since no uh, one knew that Jim was here except Ann Wheelock, it looks as though she's the guilty party. Very clever. Very clever indeed. Now, can I say something? Oh, please do, Inspector. Make it profound. Yeah. Now... Suppose a tree branch were blown down by the storm in some other part of town. Mm -hmm. Well? Couldn't it have cracked up the main power lines and put the lights out in this house? Very clever, Inspector. Very clever indeed. Now, can I say something? Yeah, only make it profound. <laughs> Inspector, you're wonderful. <laughs> now, suppose we check your premise with the local power company and then take another look inside that house. <laughs> Naturally, I can't stop you if you want to search the house, Mr. Drake. I can't imagine what you expect to find, however. I can't either, lady. Thank you, Miss Wheelock. Inspector, suppose we start with this room here. Well, I... Uh, is it necessary for you to search this particular room? Is there some reason why you don't want us to? Yes. It was my brother's room. Oh, I get it. He was the guy... Inspector. Who... Huh? I'm sorry, Miss Wheelock. I don't suppose it makes any difference. Go in if you like. Thank you. The room hasn't been occupied or opened since, since Milt went away. Go on. Do anything you like. Nothing matters now. Well, how do you like that? Well, Inspector, she can hardly be blamed for acting upset. I understand that Milton was her only living relative. How about Jim? Jim is dead, Inspector. Yeah, so he is. I, I forgot. But look... Never mind that now, Inspector. Let's ah. go in here and have a look. Oh, rather gloomy, isn't it? Would you mind rolling up those shades, Inspector? Okay. That better? Yes, at least it makes the place more cheerful. Yeah. Goes up the dust, too. <laughs> Women are sure funny. Imagine, keeping this room closed up. Yeah, sentimental is the word, I think, Inspector. Hmm? Found something? No. Nope. Just an ordinary old alarm clock. I like to hear them tick. Reminds me of when I was a boy. Like riding in sleighs, eh, Inspector? Yeah, like riding in sleighs. <laughs> hey, hmm? what are you doing over there? Oh, I'm just looking around, Inspector. Just looking around. Uh-oh. What's the uh, uh-oh for? I built, Inspector. I've got it. What? For crying out loud. That's it. It must be. There can't be any other answer. Doggone it. What are you talking about, Bart? Inspector, why didn't we think of it before? <laughs> I'll bite. Why? It was too simple, that's why. What time is it, Inspector? Time? Hmm. Can't you read? There's a clock right on the end. No. Oh, yes. 4.30. Fine. Now, Horace and Fanny will be here at 5. That gives us 30 minutes to search the cellar and the kitchen. Come along, Inspector. Now we know who murdered Jim and why. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? It doesn't matter if you've been married a dozen times. I should have told you, Harry. I should have. I know that now. Listen, darling. I love you. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Oh, it means everything, Harry. That is, it did mean everything. I don't know what I mean. I'm so confused. Oh, you poor kid. I know you didn't shoot him. Oh, I did, Harry. I did. You've got to believe me. Anne, listen to me. You're trying to protect someone, aren't you? Protect someone? You think I did it? You think that I shot your... your husband? Oh, Harry, no, I don't. You heard me threaten to kill him. You all heard me. And believe me, please, I, I didn't do it. I know you didn't, Harry. I know that you didn't. I wanted to. Nothing would have given me greater pleasure. But I didn't do it, Anne. I believe you, Harry, I do. Then why do you keep saying that you killed him? Why? But don't ask me, Harry, please. Let's drop it. Drop it? Anne, do you realize what you're saying? Do you realize what will happen if... If they take you away... Oh, that's what I want. I want them to take me away. I don't want to see this place ever again. Anne. I mean it. I've caused nothing but unhappiness. You ought to hate me, Harry. I love you. 
I'll never stop loving you. How can you? You're just being kind. How can you love the sister of a, a convict, a murderess? Anne, look. I know how you feel about Milt. It was all that you had. He made a mistake. All right, sure. That could happen to anyone. I'm not blaming you. Milt was good, Harry. Down deep, he was good. Sure, sure, I, I know. And listen to me. That must be Fanny and Horace. Well, Anne, I'm surprised that you have the nerve to show your face. Quit it, Fanny. Leave her alone. I won't quit it. I think it's disgusting. I'm ashamed that I ever thought of her as my friend. I'm sorry, Fanny. Sorry indeed. I think it's a little late for apologies, Anne Wheelock. Listen, Fanny. If you think that it was Anne who shot her, her husband, you're crazy. Oh? Crazy, am I? And just why do you think Mr. Drake asked Horace and me to come back here? Let's wait till we find out. Before we go making statements, we might regret later. Regret? <laughs> I'll hardly regret giving evidence that'll help send a murderer to the electric chair. Hey. Evidence? What do you mean, Fanny? I'll tell you precisely what I mean, Ann Wheelock. I happened to see you take that gun out of the desk drawer. You couldn't have. Oh, no? I was standing nearest to her, wasn't I? I have eyes in my head, haven't I? Come along in, Inspector. We... Yes. Yeah. Oh, ho. You two are back, are you? We certainly are, Mr. Drake. And I, for one, am ready to testify. Testify? Yes. I saw Anne take the gun from the drawer. I thought the lights were out. The lights didn't go out until after Anne had gotten the gun. Why didn't you tell us that before, lady? Because she didn't think of it before. That's why. Now she figures she can make a heroine out of herself by telling a lot of lies. That's not true, Harry Parsons. I'm only trying to do my duty as a citizen. It's pretty serious, Miss Shepard, when you accuse a person of murder. I'm quite aware of that, Mr. Drake. Oh, what's the use? I did it. I told you I did it. Isn't that enough? It will be, lady, if this case ever gets to court. Miss Shepard, did Anne take the gun from the desk with her right hand or her left? Her right. Oh? Oh. No, 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 no. It, it was a left. I, I'm sure it was a left. Did she fire it while she was standing by the desk, or did she walk up close to her husband? Why, well, she walked up close to him. How close, would you say? How close? Well, why, very close. She, she wasn't more than a foot away. Hmm. What part of the body did she shoot him? In the forehead. There's a bullet hole in the... The corpse, isn't there? Yes, and if Anne were only standing a foot away when she fired the shot, there would be powder burns, too. Powder burns? Yeah, and there weren't any. You see, Miss Shepard... You weren't at all sure what you saw. Murder witnesses are seldom sure. That's one of the great troubles of the... But I did. I'm positive. I saw Anne take the gun from the desk with her left hand and shoot her husband. No, Miss Shepard. Anne didn't take the gun from the desk with her left hand. Or her right. She didn't take it at all. But I saw her. The gun wasn't even in the desk. And Anne didn't shoot her husband. The corpse lying in the other room is not Anne's husband. Not her husband? Anne. He is. Horace and Fanny saw him alive. They know. They only know what you told the man. You introduced Chuck Anderson as your husband because he forced you to. No, no. Did you say Chuck Anderson, Mr. Drake? That's right, Parsons. Chuck and Anne's brother Milton were cellmates. They escaped together. Milton became wounded and Chuck deserted him. Isn't that the way it was, Anne? I don't know. I don't know. Yes, you do know. Chuck came here and forced you to pretend that he was your husband by threatening to let Milton die if you didn't. Anne. Is this true? Of course it's true, Bob. We don't make mistakes. But what Chuck Anderson didn't know was that Milton had gotten here first. He was here when Chuck arrived. Anne had been taking care of him for days. Yeah. So she couldn't go to the police because if she did, they'd search the house and find her brother. And why didn't you tell me? How could I? I didn't know what to do. Well, then it... Why, it was Milton who shot Chuck Anderson. Is that right, Mr. Drake? That's right, Horace. Then Milton got out of the house. And left poor Anne to take the blame for shooting that... That gangster. Yeah, poor Anne knew she'd never be convicted of murder, lady. There wasn't any evidence. She just wanted to give her brother time enough to get away. To get away? Then you mean that... Oh, good heavens, what was that? Just what it sounded like, lady. Come on, Bart, this is it. Shot himself. Yes, and with the same thirty-two caliber pistol he used to shoot Chuck Anderson. Hmm. Pick up that note lying beside him, Inspector. Yeah. I think you'll find it's a full confession. Get up, Dabba. 
Dobbin. Get along, boy. Well, Dobbin seems anxious to get back to town, Inspector. Yeah, me too. You know, Bart, I feel kind of sorry for Ann. You do? Harboring an escaped criminal is a serious offense. Yes, but doing so at the point of a gun isn't, Inspector. You mean Milton made her take care of him? I don't know, Inspector. That's what his confession said. The local authorities will have to decide. I guess you're right. Which reminds me. Of what, Inspector? I'm asking you how you knew that Milton had been hiding in the house before Chuck Anderson got there. Oh, that. Yeah, that. Well, it was that old alarm clock, Inspector. What about the old alarm clock? Anne said the room hadn't been opened or occupied since Milton went away. Yet the clock was running. Remember how its tickling gave you a nostalgic feeling? By golly, that's right. By golly, it is, Inspector. By golly. By golly, what, Inspector? By golly, but <laughs> I'm going to stick my chin out. Tell me, how is it you can figure these things out so easily? I see what you mean, Inspector. The answer, of course, is that mystery is my hobby. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, a nice little bit of uh, misdirection in this because our attention was focused on the, you know, obvious suspects who we actually saw in the scene. But I like just the little hints they left that someone else was there. Well, listen, our comments and feedback now. And I received uh, this email uh, regarding uh, the airmail mystery. Martin sends along a photo from uh, the Queensland Times in Australia. And uh, the uh, caption of it is, Irene uh, Delroy of the U.S. Department of Justice, give me Jimmy Gifford, and Sergeant Fitzgerald affect uh, uh, an arrest in transatlantic uh, transatlantic uh, murder mystery broadcast from 4IP each Friday uh, evening at 8.30. And uh, this uh, was a radio program that came out of Ipswich, uh, Queensland, Australia. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, I, I've not seen the p picture before. I would almost uh, bet that uh, this would be a uh, Australian uh, re-recording of the uh, of the plays that were broadcast in America, uh, and the caption uh, has a different uh, title than, of course, the airmail mystery, which raises an exciting uh, prospect. Uh, maybe they made an, made another radio serial in the U.S. Uh, or even one in Australia. If it was acted well enough, I, I would uh, definitely be willing to listen. Uh, but the idea that there might be more uh, with Irene Delroy and the gang out there somewhere... Uh, you know, so many uh, radio transcription discs lost. So it's kind of a, you know, who knows if the transcription disc, you know, actually survived. Very little from the 1930s uh, does. But if it was out there, I would so love to hear it and uh, really like to hear uh, another adventure if it was as well written as the airmail mystery was. So thanks for that uh, tantalizing uh, bit of uh, photo, uh, Martin. I, I really do appreciate that. Well, now I want to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Rosa and John, Patreon supporters since uh, January. Currently supporting us at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more or per month. Thank you so much for your support. And that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for uh, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Next Thursday, we will be back with Mystery is My Hobby. And next Saturday, be sure and listen for uh, a uh, previously uncirculated episode of Police Blotter.
In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net, follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>